Okay, have you started deciding which horses you're gonna put money on? If you have not, pay very close attention to the next few minutes here with my friend, Donna Brothers. He's gonna talk about some of her favorites. Now, you have the best job, I always say, because right after the race on NBC, you're on your horse and you go galloping up, which you know how to do as a former jockey, <laughs> and then you interview the jockey. Isn't that so exciting? It is, Shannon. You know, we've both worked in television for a long time, so most of the things that we do are just standing in front of the camera, looking directly at the the camera right. and not talking to anybody and so you know I do interviews and other interviews during the show like the walk over the trainers walk over with the horses but when you're talking to somebody right after a life-changing event it is pretty exciting and and we get in there so quickly because the whole idea is to get get them while they're still in their heart instead of yes. in their head already so it, it is nice yeah I love watching those interviews it's just it's well, just good. Awesome. I love doing them yes wonderful <laughs> okay so let's talk about some of the horses that you've been watching uh, let's start off with Forte the favorite trained by Todd Pletcher what are your thoughts on Forte well um, he, he's the most likely favorite if he ends up, here's one of his races uh, for the prep. This was the Fountain of Youth down in Florida. And this was a race that he won impressively. And after this race, everybody was like, Forte is definitely the favorite for the Kentucky Derby. But then he came back in the Florida Derby, and his Florida Derby win wasn't quite as impressive. We're looking at it here. He's, he doesn't even look like he's going to win the race. He's fifth right now. You see those four right. horses who are coming through the stretch together, and now two of them have kind of pulled away. And, and Irad Ortiz, who's on Forte, is, is all out to get up for this win. And so after this race, a lot of people were like, well, I don't know, maybe I could take somebody else. But he is definitely the horse to beat. And if he goes off at odds of two to one or greater, he would be the horse I would bet on. But if he's less than that, if he's like six to five, then you've got to try to beat him. And, and there's a few ways that you could do that. The, Brad Cox has a now three horses in the race with the defection of Blazing Sevens. So he's got the horse that won the Arkansas Derby, Angel of Empire, but he's also got a couple of other horses. Probably the most likely horses to beat Todd Pletcher's Forte uh -huh. come out of Todd Pletcher's barn. <laughs> <laughs> there one you go. Of, one of those is a horse named Tappet Trice. He's, uh, he's a horse who, who won the Bluegrass Stakes here in Kentucky last time out. You can see him way back right here going into this first turn. Um, actually, he's not even in the picture. He, he got shuffled so far back. Oh, he actually has moved up now a little bit. Now he, he's the gray horse. You can see him in the pink and, and yellow silks. And uh -huh. he's on the outside making the lead right here. And, and a lot of people, the thing they don't like about him is that he comes from so far back. He was last going into that first turn, made a move around the first turn. But he has won his last four consecutive races, and he is by Tappet, whose offspring mm -hmm. has won the Belmont Stakes three or four times now. And so everybody believes that the mile and a quarter is probably going to suit him the best distance that he's run so far. And a lot of people love the Grays, too. And Pletcher has another one that you like, Kingsbarn. Yeah, and the thing about Kings Barnes that I think a lot of people are going to think about on that day, but maybe not prior to that day, uh -huh. is that earlier in the day we're going to watch the King's Coronation. Oh, yes, so that's he's right. he's probably going to end up being a hunch, but he, he's, he's one of the horses who's very likely to get the lead, so Todd's sort of got all the positions covered. He's got Kings Barnes with spe <laughs> speed, uh -huh. Forte who stocks, and then Tappet Trice who comes from off of it. But I think he's going to end up being a shorter price than you'd like because of the Kings Coronation. What if he gets first, second, and third, Todd Pletcher? Wouldn't that be crazy? He could. He, he could. very well wow. could. Yes. All right, uh, there is a Japanese horse that, for the first time, a lot of people think may have a chance when uh, the UAE Derby. Mm -hmm. We've had a couple of horses from Japan who've run in the Kentucky Derby before but this is the horse with the most chance so far he won the UAE Derby on the lead the entire way that's him in front right now and, and this is a horse who in Japan had been coming from off the pace his race prior to this was in Saudi Arabia and he finished third but that was his first race of the year he came back and just dominated in the UAE Derby uh, against a pretty good field. The horse wow. running third here is a horse named Continuar, also from Japan, who's also going to be in the Kentucky Derby. But this horse is here. He's uh -huh. training here now, and so 
he's a horse definitely worth watching. Fun to watch. Okay, now Absolutely. you have a big race coming up too. I do. After the Derby, uh, tell us about this one. So I'm on the board of the Brain Injury Alliance of Kentucky, and we have our annual run, walk, and roll. And we can see it right there on May 13th. It's the Saturday after the Kentucky Derby. And if you sign up early, you can sign up for $25. After May 1st, it's going to be $35. And it's, the web address is right there. But if, if you're not looking at your TV, it's just B-I-A-K dot U-S. Okay. And you can go there and register for the event. But it's going to be a lot of fun. This is the first year that we've added the 5K element to. It mm -hmm. before it had been a, a walk essentially and or why is this so important to you well uh, you know if you look at the history of jockeys I know people talk about CTE with football players mm -hmm. but I would say that it is the number one most common injury among jockeys exercise riders and in fact all equestrians and so any sort of traumatic brain injury it, it comes on suddenly people don't expect it and the brain injury alliance of kentucky is a group that steps in and helps the family and gives them the direction that they need to get a support group or get some sort of therapy and so we raise money for that because it, it's one of the things that affects kentuckians in a way that nobody ever expects in fact 35,000 kentuckians a year which is among the highest in the country wow i did not know that all yeah. right well donna thank you so much Thanks, and i appreciate Shannon. you Good coming you. in sharing your thoughts with us really great i'm so excited Happy about Derby. the derby <laughs>